Anchor did it again and released a whole new pile of products. I haven't finished testing the old ones yet, so today we're going to be comparing the new 100 watt prime power adapter to the older, not by much, 100 watt 3 series power adapter. And along the way, Monoprice and Roserin are also going to get in on the action too. There are more 100 watt power adapters. Do you think they'll all be the same or do you think they will be very different? As usual, I have no idea what to expect on this one, so it will be fun to explore how these different power adapters perform. They take different approaches to packaging, as usual, with the monoprice being the simplest and Anchor being pretty well retail shelf friendly. Four adapters, equal power level, but all different in operation. The negotiation for multiple port operation will be looked at, along with lots of others, features, and functions. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters. First up is this Monoprice GAN 100 100 watt PD wall charger. This adapter comes in a compact box with bubble wrap. Ooh, bubble wrap. Pop. The adapter itself looks okay. It is a little older of a model now, and there is a replacement out, which I will also have to review. It is a moderate sized device for the power level on first impression. It has foldable plugs and four USB ports. This does support the Clip-On International adapters too, so bonus feature. The port distribution is questionable for sure. When we flip the adapter around, we can see that this adapter has a safety listing, which is nice to see, as well as the Department of Energy 6 mark on the product which would indicate that this has been tested and complies with energy efficiency requirements. The port sharing is in this giant wad of text no one wants to read. It is hard to decipher. Let me check around for the user manual. Oh, there isn't one. Well, that was easy. Let's plug it in and find out what it can do. The first thing I see with this power adapter is that it has high idle power consumption. This does mean it doesn't meet the DOE requirements right off the bat. This adapter isn't far over the line, but it is over. For the modes of operation, this adapter has 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed USB 3.1 power delivery modes. The power adapter also has a programmable power supply mode or variable voltage mode, which can be more efficient for charging, of 20 volts. This can go all the way to 5 amps too, so this should support 45 watt Samsung super fast charging. The power negotiation is the same as most of these USB power adapters. Any plug or unplug causes a renegotiation of all the outputs. The data on this one is, well, data. It isn't bad efficiency wise, but it isn't great either. And other than that, the size, there are far better options out there. So this isn't great. The idle is too high and the poor performance shows that the lower wattage with the lower efficiency of the circuitry. The voltages on the output side were stable though and the ripple was relatively good. The Roserin 100 watt fast charger 3C plus 1AK 021-ST01 is up next. Tiny box for this one and not much else. Plastic wrapping, a user manual and an adapter. Not much more needed here. The adapter is fairly compact for a 100 watt adapter. I'm getting the Minix and Invisi vibes from this one, which isn't a good thing for the 100 watt size. We get four total USB ports, 1A and 3C, so a good mix of old and new here. When we flip the adapter around, we can see that this adapter has a safety listing, which is nice to see. I see the Department of Energy 6 mark on this product also, which indicates that this has been tested and complies with energy efficiency requirements. So again, something else to check out. The user manual is not terrible on this one. They give the thing I like, the little infographic, which shows what port can do what. It's just so much clearer than whatever the monoprice adapter had. I want to plug in four things. Well, it's clearly laid out in the user manual what it can do with four things plugged in. Great. Well, let's plug it in and find out what it can do. The first thing I see with this power adapter is that it has reasonably low idle power consumption. This is right in line with other power adapters around this power level. Nice. The modes of operation this adapter has is 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed USB 3.1 power delivery modes on the USB-C ports. I didn't check the USB-A ports, I just assumed 5 volt only at this point. Some of these do have QC. The power adapter also has a programmable power supply mode or variable voltage mode, which can be more efficient for charging of 11 volts. This can go to 4 amps, so this is borderline for Samsung super fast charging. The power negotiation is the same as most of these USB power adapters. Any plug or unplug causes a renegotiation of all the outputs. The data on this one is kind of not great. We'll get into that more in a little bit. The performance is not class leading by any means, but its efficiency and idle performance are good enough that it meets the basic DOE 6 requirements, and it means it's an okay performer for charging from low wattage up to high wattage. I would prefer this adapter for lower wattage only though. The DC side looks good though, low ripple and good voltage tolerance. This leads us into the third option. The Anchor 317 Charger 100 Watt is up. 
This power adapter comes with a bonus in the box. You get a USB power cable too. Nice. Extra cable to test. I already have a bunch to add to the list. The power adapter has a very glossy finish on the front of the adapter. Not sure I like that. For the low end rent side of the market, for these three series of anchor chargers, you get one port. The adapter is quite inexpensive as well. We'll get to that later, but there must be a reason for the cheapness of this adapter. The user manual is okay. It does provide some efficiency numbers for the adapter. These are usually pretty conservative. The adapter doesn't have much for modes since it is a single port device, so not much to say, I guess. Still a lot of pages for that. Time to plug this one in and see what it can do. The first thing I see with this power adapter is that it has very low idle power consumption. This is lower than the other power adapters around this power level. Very nice. For modes of operation, this adapter has 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed USB 3.1 power delivery modes on the USB-C port. 12 being an extra, Anchor usually doesn't have, so nice addition. The power adapter also has a programmable power supply mode, which can do 11 or 16 volts. This can go up to 4 amps also, so this is borderline for Samsung super fast charging. The power negotiation works great on the single port. It only has one port, so there is no renegotiation issues with this power adapter. Great. The AC data on this one is very similar to the Roserin. It is more efficient though, and better on quality too, but it has another issue. The performance is not class leading by any means, but its efficiency and idle performance are good enough that it meets the basic DOE 6 requirements, and that means it is a performer for charging from low wattage up to high wattage. The idle power is actually very good. The issue with this power adapter is the ripple. It has very high voltage ripple. Even with the 20 MHz bandwidth limit on the scope and several different probing techniques, there will be a lot of periodic spikes that lead to a very high voltage ripple when compared to the others. Over a volt at full load, the static DC voltage was also on the lower side. Last up is the Anchor 100 watt GAN Wall Charger Prime A2343. Too many primes, too many GANs. This adapter comes in the box with Anchor Prime written on it. The adapter is brand new, just on the market July 2023. It is the usual style with a plastic wrapped adapter. The adapter is a three port device with two USB-C ports and one USB-A port. The adapter has a little bit of a shiny finish to the port side. Let me know if you like this. A lot better than the scratch and dent one I got several months back. This adapter has the requisite safety marks and the DOE 6 logo. The user manual for this one is typical fare. It describes the modes and has values for efficiency that make absolutely no sense. Really low performance numbers. If this thing was that inefficient, it would literally melt without a cooling fan. So yeah, that's a typo or something. We'll see what the real performance numbers are like in a little bit. So let's plug it in and find out what it can do. The idle power settled out to an acceptable number. This isn't the worst idle performance, but not the best. It meets the requirements though. For modes of operation, this adapter has 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed USB 3.1 power delivery modes. Again, Anchor including the 12 volt mode here as an addition. The power adapter also has the programmable power supply mode or the variable voltage mode, which has 11 volts and can do up to 5 amps too, so this should support the 45 watt Samsung super fast charging. The power sharing is different on this one though. It still renegotiates on plugs and unplugs, but it is so fast on unplugs the meter doesn't actually register a change if only in the 5 volt mode. This isn't bad. It shows some improvement on the plug and unplug of devices. Okay, we're finally here. The data is not bad. The power adapter kind of stands out from the bunch. High efficiency across the board, reasonably low voltage ripple on the output, DC voltage is a little low but in spec, the overall score is a lowered a little bit because of the 10% performance mark, which I could game to get this adapter better marks if I turn on the PFC mode by using 9 volts for this mode also. The adapter is really up there with the best adapters though. 92% efficiency on the high end is no easy mark. This also means it won't get as hot charging devices. Overload is testing when the device safely shuts down when too much power is drawn. This can happen from a short circuit or a misbehaving device. These adapters all tripped at very safe levels and recovered after removal of the fault. This is great. The power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. The goal is to have all the waves look the same shape as the yellow line, a sine wave. These power adapters have it and don't have it, depending on which one you're looking at. Here is a comparison of the Roserin and the Anchor doing 100 watts on the output. You can clearly see that one of these devices doesn't look like the others shape-wise. I did the math. No one runs these at full tilt, but if you did, at average US electricity prices, it's about seven extra dollars per year to run the Roserin. In reality, it's probably three dollars a year at normal use conditions. This still is borderline for mattering, but again, we're talking about 100 watts here, so relatively low power level still. 
the anchor does turn its power factor correction on and off for the 5 volt mode. This is okay since the correction doesn't really matter at that 5 to 15 watt range anyway, but the anchor's PFC circuit is amazing even at 10 watts. This is shaping up to be pretty good, redeeming themselves from the 736 here. The 317 was cheap and didn't have PFC. The Monoprice has PFC on all the time, but it is very hungry for the power and it isn't very efficient, which hurts the numbers of this power adapter instead of helps them. The quality is good, but the watts are high. Okay, time to get some weights on these adapters. The packaging for all these adapters was pretty standard and even on the lighter side, still more plastic than needed. There was one standout adapter in the group for weight and that is the Anchor Prime series. This 100 watt adapter with PFC is lighter than anything I've seen and is just as small too. So this is a very nice result here. Okay, time to compare the data. I tested quite a few adapters around 100 watts, so plenty to compare to. When comparing the idle data with others, there are a few lower wattage options and a few moderate wattage options. The Monoprice is the standout of the bunch. This one is a little too high on the watts, so it doesn't meet the DOE6 efficiency claims. The others were generally okay. The 317, not a great adapter, but good to sit there doing nothing. The Satoshi 100 watt is still the crown for this though. On the idle graph, the Satoshi 100 watt adapter is the best for idle. The Anchors takes a higher spot, but is still meeting those Department of Energy requirements, so not bad, but obviously could be better. Actually a little surprised this one is as bad as it is. When comparing the overall data with the other adapters, these again span a wide range of values. The Anchor has an anchor position with the 317, but the Prime series is a strong performer. One of the best performances yet from Anchor. The price is high though, so we'll get into that in a minute. The Rosarin is not a choice, and the Monoprice with its poor efficiency is definitely no as an actual power adapter. On the average power consumption graph, Bassia still takes the top spots in not only quality, but also takes impressive spots in power consumption for the desktop charger. It is the lowest and therefore the most efficient device across the whole range of operation. This is why this power adapter is what I use to give the best possible charge to power banks for efficiency ratings. The Monoprice is a larger consumer of power. Let's talk about value. I picked a range of adapters from cheap to expensive. The Anchor 317 being inexpensive looks like it has some issues. The voltage ripple was by far the worst of the bunch. So it's cheap and nasty. You only get one port too. Prime series. Does look a little overpriced, but on sale this is probably the best value. Full retail, not so much. Monoprice is price competitive at least, but not the best adapter either. Full stop on the Roaster 100 watt wall offering. The Anchor is basically asking a premium price to save a few percent of energy. Is that worth it? You be the judge. Okay, another round of 100 watt power adapters. They're all very different products. The Anchor definitely differentiates the cheaper products and the more expensive products in this 100 watt lineup, with the flagship having the best feature set, being the lightest 100 watt adapter I've seen, and also one of the most compact if not the most. This is seriously in 65 watt territory and it has power factor correction, so you really can't go wrong here, but it comes with a premium price to boot. The 317 is not great. The Monoprice is not great for other reasons. The Roserin is not great for yet other reasons, but each does have some positive. The Roserin does have a decently stable DC output, one of the better ones versus the little more on the fly Anchor 317 version. The efficiency overall of the Anchor really tells me that this is the winner of this bunch, at least, and I finally think that Anchor got a 100 watt power adapter that meets the criteria of being worth it. From a weight perspective, you can get that fast charging and not pay the penalty for a heavy or large brick. The Monoprice is a little older. Actually, this version has been replaced. I have the newer version too, but I grabbed this one instead to test today, and it definitely shows its age. It doesn't keep up with the newer and more modern adapters. No new winners this week, but one of these is a serious improvement over some previous generation adapters and easily is the best offering from this company in this category. Okay, time to apply some stickers. These are tested and on the database so you can take a look at how they stack up. The Anchor Prime 7 series is small and packs a lot of performance for that small package. Easily the best of the day. Still, overall, slightly less efficient than the Basius desktop adapter. The weight is in a class of its own though. If you are a weight weenie, then this is for you. Thanks for watching. I'm going to be putting these two higher wattage power banks head to head next week to see which one can meet its claims and if either is any good. The new Anchor Prime 200 watt will be one of them. Check my website for upcoming videos. There's a schedule of release dates. I have many more of these adapters to get through, so many more videos in the future. Goodbye.